everybody. This is my build of a of a grabber truck. Grabber trucks are very similar to garbage trucks, except instead of grabbing bins, their primary um, their primary objective is to grab large objects, such as broken down cars, um, mattresses, etc. So for this model, I actually have. I'll show you some details first. I have up here some suggestions of rear mirrors the steering wheel which is not connected to the wheels I also have doors if you can tell right here but I have a little step stool there's also an area underneath the seat for them to put uh, uh, for them to put their feet I also have right here a control panel and then the lug nuts the grill the front lights turn signal slash hazard lights again the other side view mirrors this door opens up which actually reveals a control panel a control console for operating all the gimmicks and on this side right here we have a chain that is just currently tabbed in just kind of start away before I get to the main function of this I just wanted to show um, the the current thing or the some of the smaller functions so I have three gears up top um, there you go that's easier to see it Pay no attention to that thing that's wobbling around. <laughs> you grab the center axle, the one with the red, and you can actually rotate the wheels. It is geared down, so you have an advantage there too. Um, it does roll, however, because of the long uh, wheelbase, its turn radius sucks, to be frank. <laughs> These gears, on the other hand, they go down here, and then they turn towards this direction. I have here switches and one on the opposite side too. And so what this does is it goes into a, a gearbox and there's two section, there's two selections, either this way or that way. And again, that is also mirrored. So each one of these just controls that half of the gearbox. On the sides here, I have knobs that control the outriggers. No, they don't lift it up, but they just support. On the back, I have a suggestion of a ladder that can be folded down. And you sip on the wheel, sip on here, grab this long arm bar, and then you can go inside and fix things up. Some other details include, I have um, turning signal, slash hazard light, brake, and reverse on either side, and they do stick out. I also have this knob that actually deploys the rear outriggers, which will make more sense in just a moment. Um, if I turn this gear, nothing's happening until I engage the gearbox. Again, it's essentially the whole vehicle is split down the middle, so there's two gearboxes in one. Um, also, uh, from this point to about right here is mostly full of gears. You can see from the underside, and there's a bunch of stuff inside the middle that you can't see, but you can also see some things right here that will be going on later. So if I engage this towards the front, I can turn this knob and raise it up. Now going back here, if I angle this towards the back, it gives me rotation of this. Well, usually there's enough clearance. I didn't make enough clearance. There we go. So you can rotate it to whichever direction you want. You can rotate it forward. Motion is transferred through that bottom tan beveled gear into the top one, which goes into the, the linear actuator, causing this whole thing to raise up. I have also a gear right here that goes through a universal joint into this actuator. Rotating that activates or causes this top part to bend down or upward, depending on the direction you rotate. Essentially, it's creating an elbow joint. I believe that's, yes, and that's as the extent is where it, as, as, as how far it can go down. This gear up here controls the claws. And the claws actually can go uh, full spread. It's actually going through a worm gear, this motion, so the axle is spinning, goes through two universal joints and then hits the worm gear. That worm gear, the worm gear creates tons of friction. So 
I'm actually trying to separate these or pull these closer together and you can tell it's not moving, not really budging. Which is great when you want to pick up objects. I have here just a plastic ping pong ball. I'm going to show you how this thing is going to lift it up. It won't roll away. So what I'll do is actually we'll speed up the video and you guys will be able to just witness it with, and grab with, uh, what it, and grab with all that it does. Getting the claw out of the way, these outriggers here, which can, can go like that, create a added level of um, support. Let me just manually do this really quick. I have to flip this around though. There is a way to extend it. Grabbing this, you can actually go towards the outriggers. Then when you rotate this, it actually extends it out. I believe it's 11 studs longer, 11 modules longer on either side. Now, once you've gotten to the place where you want to, to dump it, the arm will first be, re well, will first move out of the way. Then grab this gear like I showed before, and you will extend the rear outriggers. Grabbing the switch, which is in neutral, we're gonna bring it forward. Just grab the arm again, bring it out of the way. Then, again, you can grab this switch, and, or grab this gear, and then when you rotate it, it'll actually lift the entire bed. And this is done via a large linear actuator. You can kind of see just the degree that it goes as well. The back section of this is actually smoothed out and this is gravity operated so there is room for it to fall out. This vehicle does measure about two feet long. It was super, it's actually super heavy and the hardest thing for me was trying to fix a Boeing issue because of the long wheelbase um, it made this thing um, start to bow, and it's very hard too because getting everything from like right here to about right here is just gears and gears, or room for gears to go. So what I had to do is I actually had to raise some things up. So I have these black beams right here that you can see. There you go, and also some underneath, and those supports as well as some other things that I have done was able to actually balance out the the, the force. So what I've done is I've taken apart most of the truck, just added these two tall axles just so I can kind of show you um, some of the gearbox stuff. So first off we have the steering, which is done fairly straightforward. Um, the switches on either side, which you can actually remove these panels. Actually, let me turn that off. But that set that aside so it is mirrored or at least for the start of it on, a, on another side but you have this axle that goes all the way down here to this gear and hits another 12 tooth gear so since they have the same gear ratio it's a one to one input so and this just gets redirected to this driving ring so as you can tell that's all the driving ring is rotating this switch can engage into one gear or into the other. If it engages into this blue um, 22 tooth gear, let me rotate this up. I don't know if you can see, but right underneath this black gear is another one that connects to the axle. And just because of how the size of, of it is, that black gear will not touch this um, 16 tooth gear. But essentially, it just had a bunch of gears, or I just had a reduction of gears that then brought another black gear right here that meshed with this one, and that's what activated this actuator. 
Now going to the other side, um, again back to neutral, so when I spin this it does nothing. Then I'm going to get it forward, gauging it here. It's hard to see, but there's a black gear right in there. There you can kind of see it. And the shaft will go through here underneath my thumb. Hit a 16 tooth gear, red, and then go back to this light gray. And then get redirected towards the outriggers. So that's how that works. So you can see it again here. It's all connected. Having removed the other side just now, again we have the same type of thing with the axle. One to one gearing ratio causes just the driving ring to move. If I, and then again, and I can engage it either way. Um, if I engage into this red gear, you can see from the underside now, it actually goes towards, goes over across three red, total three red gears, after which it then goes up here and it connects to this black gear, which will actually rotates the turntable. So you can see how that works. Again, essentially it's just motion along this path, then that just is raised up. Now if I rotate it the other way, what it does, I lift up this actuator. Motion is transferred from this red gear that is now engaged. Um, so one second like that. Let me just show you. So it gets transferred all the way across to this 16 tooth gear. After which the motion is sent, it's actually sent through that uh, red gear that you can see right there. And since it's free spinning, it doesn't move with it. But then it goes into this axle. Into, and it's a one-to-one -one gear ratio that I have right there. And it just goes up into the section right there, that little gear there. Which will be connected to a small actuator, which would be in charge of raising and lowering the arm. So, there we go. Everything's actually so tight and well-balanced and everything that I'm confident to grab from just one side, just this side, and lift this up. Again, it's massive and super heavy. Um, and this is actually one of the biggest builds I have completed today, and I'm very, very, very pleased with it. So please like, subscribe, leave a comment, let me know what you guys think, let me know if you have any suggestions of future builds to do, and thanks.